At the end of the day, no matter what the label is, words like gay and lesbian and bisexual, at the end of the day, it's still a label. At the end of the day, it doesn't sum up who you are. You're a person. <laughs> you are a unique, unrepeatable person. And you're complicated. And that's just who we are. We're, just, we're complicated people. I was always really into imaginative play. My parents really encouraged that. I mean, we definitely had toys, but if it was the summer, it was like, you're not coming inside until dinner. You know, we were outside. Uh, we were running around in the woods. We would pretend that it was a magical world. <laughs> My parents raised us Catholic. Uh, we were at Mass every Sunday, prayed before all of our meals. Uh, we went to Catholic school all the way through. Yeah, in middle school of a class of 30 or 40, like a quarter of you are popular just by default. Um, you know, whereas you get into high school and things get a lot more complicated socially. And I just found I just had a tough time adjusting. Um, in the summer between my freshman and sophomore year, I go to this conference and, you know, there's over 2,000 teens that are there. You know, the energy was high. And that night, you know, there we were. The room is dark. There's just the light of these candles, you know, up on the altar. I'm just kneeling there. I can still remember, because we were in this huge gymnasium, right? And our group had gotten stuck all the way in this back corner. But I just could not take my eyes off the monstrance. And I felt like in this room of thousands of people, he was looking at me. I just felt like he saw those places I was alone and angry. He saw those places where I was despairing. And he didn't just see it, he didn't just pass by, right? But he knew it, right? He was entering into my heart. Um, and he loved me. <laughs> he loved me in that place. That was the point where I really made a choice. This is something I wanna do. I wanna find out what that gift is. I wanna find out who this God is. Um, and then when I did, you know, kind of make a group of friends, one of the friends started kind of slipping away. And I realized when I thought about this friend that I kind of thought about her in a romantic way. I found myself in a series of codependent friendships. There was one in particular um, where that was a little bit mutual. And it kind of got to the point where we're like, what's going on here? Uh, and we named to each other, like we're attracted to each other. And eventually that friendship just kind of imploded. And what was going on in my heart was, I feel like I just broke up with someone. Like, I, I feel like we broke up and I was jealous of some of our other friends. And I just kind of had to admit to myself, like, I think I was in love with her. And I realized like, I can't do this by myself. So I started uh, talking to other friends, uh, spiritual direction, like kind of talked through that friendship and counseling a little bit and started being more honest with God <laughs> as well. And really starting to name this with God and be like, okay, this is what's happening. And I don't need to hide this in like the darkness of my heart, um, but I can bring it out into the light before God. I can bring it out into the light before these friends that I trust. Um, and God can move in that space. I graduated with theology and catechetics majors, so I was really immersed in a really solid theology, just learning a lot about the faith, and I just could not get enough. I studied abroad, I went on a ton of road trips, had opportunities of service. Yeah, it's, it's every day, ultimately, like the choice to follow Christ. And if we really believe that heaven is real, if we really believe that God has made us for an infinite love, then the journey is a joy. Because we're moving. We're moving in the direction of the fulfillment of our desires. We're moving in the direction of the ultimate joy, the ultimate destination.
It's not that I don't experience attraction. It's not that at moments, you know, you don't like imagine what this could be like with this person. But at the deepest level, what I want is Christ, right? What I want is to be united with the true lover of my soul. And he had things to say when he's questioned about the nature of marriage and divorce. What does he do? He points back to Genesis. He points back to the Garden of Eden in the beginning, right? When man and woman were made intentionally designed to fit and that that union would be life-giving, right? That's what Jesus points to. And I, and I believe him. And I understand how it fits in the big picture of things. I understand why the uniqueness of masculinity matters, why the uniqueness of femininity matters. If I were ever to choose against it, I would be denying myself. We have a, a common origin, we have a common destiny, and we have a common hot mass in the middle. Uh, we all come from God, right? We're all created in His image and likeness. We all have intrinsic dignity. I think a lot of times we forget the power of human autonomy, uh, the ability to choose Christ, to choose fellowship, to choose vulnerability, to choose prayer. The choice to follow Christ, to live in his grace, the choice to trust in his mercy is, is a daily thing. And, and the beauty of an infinite God <laughs> um, is we've got an infinite way to go. Uh, the times in my life when I've been most tempted to compromise is when I'm tired and when I feel like the things that I want or the things that I've demanded from God are never going to happen. And like, what a waste. What a waste of time. <laughs> what a waste of time to worry about that. We have a God who is trustworthy, a God who keeps his promises. The journey is never over. And when we start thinking we've arrived, so we're missing out.